Namaste, beautiful friends. Welcome to the gathering. I am David Alt. I have a very dear friend um, that I love and cherish very much, who has been on a lengthy, arduous cancer journey. And for those of you who have shared that experience with those that you love or have been on that journey yourself, you know how completely overwhelming it is, particularly when you may not have uh, conscious support around you and the value of having people go with you to treatments and to sometimes be a second listening ear uh, in doctor's appointments when so much information and speculation is being thrown your way. And we are, he is um, experiencing sort of um, a form of exhaustive research and trials. And so as we talked this week, he said to me, um, I need some advice, David. I need to know how to better control my mind. He said, I, I'll get on the internet and I'll read certain periodicals and it will say things about my condition and on and on and on where he gets pulled into the fear of, of dying and the fear of immortality and all of the other things that he wants to continue to do and explore naturally. And I, I, I heard what he said, how can I control my mind? And let me tell you a little bit that this person has uh, been a spiritual community member uh, under me, uh, me as teacher. And so there's a little bit of responsibility through the various phases of my own evolution, where I may have taught from a textbook standpoint about change your thinking, change your life, or control your thoughts, and, and those kinds of things. And I have evolved to where I do not subscribe to the literalism or even the possibility of that, if you can listen pretty closely. It isn't that the quality of thought does not affect the quality of our life. It does. However, we're human. We're in a space suit uh, that is a human suit. And part of this journey is a thinking mind. And who knows how they came up with this number, but it's speculated that there are some 60,000 thoughts a day that we think. Now, where the control part is or where the awareness comes in is the fascination that the majority of those 60,000 thoughts are not new thoughts. They're not fresh thoughts. They're not even impulse thoughts. They are held thoughts that have established themselves as like a, a belief system. They are grudges, they are stories, they are all kinds of uh, past woundings and other challenging, not very nourishing, nourishing or not very positive thoughts that we have not let go of. And so what we have done is we have collected them and we are holding them. And yet a thought that I have evolved in seeing or experiencing or believing myself, a thought is just a thought. It's like a cloud. It's like a, a, a raindrop. It's like something that will automatically happen. We can't control a cloud and we can't control a raindrop from falling, but we can observe them. And we can find relationship and harmony with them, but we cannot stop them or prevent them. And I was explaining to my friend, I sort of apologized, and I said, if there was any time under my tutelage that I might have said, you can control your thoughts, I want, I want, to, I want to remedy that right now. 
I, I want to offer you a new strategy or a new practice. And that is, we don't control them. They're automatic. We will always have a thinking mind. But what we can begin to evolve into is that we simply observe them. And in the observation of the thought, you don't hold on. Even a positive thought, even a negative thought, whatever, they, an old thought, a new thought, you just observe them and they drift by. And the more that we are able to practice observing the thought rather than identifying the thought or collecting the thoughts, the more then that this so-called liberation or freedom or ease begins to have a breathability inside of us because we're no longer busying ourselves with trying to control something. We are no longer identifying with a thought. And so as a thought occurs, even the thought of, ow, that hurt in terms of my feelings, I don't then hold on to that and begin to strategize what I'm going to do about that. I just observe it. It's, it's a practice, right? Because this is not the way in which we have been conditioned. This is not the way in which we have practiced often. Until we sort of evolve into an awareness that you and I are not our thoughts. There is an observation of that. And as we go even deeper with that, which is a whole nother conversation, we begin to see what is that then which is the observer. And you could go to sort of the Magnus, which would be um, uh, true essence or loving awareness. So what you are is loving awareness. What I am is loving, what we are collectively, not even separate, but just are, is loving awareness identifying through a human body. But if I'm locked into or trapped into the practice of not only having the thought, again, which is an automatic part of being human, but then beginning to identify them, then I realize that I'm being ruled by a sort of conceptual mind. And there will never be any reconciliation in that. There will never be any true liberation in that. And so this spiritual teaching about your thoughts create your reality, it isn't that the thought then creates the reality. The, the observ observation of the thought, but not the identification of the thought, reveals the reality or the true essence of who and what we are as that allness as that oneness as that absolute love that are all of the characteristics that we feebly search for and grab at to describe god so it isn't about your thoughts create your reality so off we're gonna go on this journey of changing and controlling and it's more about just observing the fact that, oh, okay, I get that this is just a part of things, just like clouds come and rain comes and seasons come and change comes. I'm not going to spend my time controlling them. I'm going to practice being in this observational state. And hear me when I say that the, the role of the observer or the practice of observation means that you and I can go anywhere. We can be in any situation. We can be in the most uh, mind-blowing chaos. And as we just observe the chaos, but not try to control the chaos, what then becomes is we reveal the true, the true nature, the true stability, the 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 true evolution of what you and I are. And so what I said to my friend was that state of practice, the controlling my thoughts, it's not wrong. It's sort of the way in which we have digested the information that we've been given. 
But as we kind of chew on that and we almost reach a sort of dead end with that, that method, then we can we allow ourselves instead of going, oh, I'm just a failure at this to go, let me set down that method and go beyond this method. Let me set down this particular spiritual path or this this particular spiritual practice and let me see then what is beyond that. Let me go to college. Let me go to university and let me do my time there. But let me not become a professional student where I then don't take the information and I go out into the world to practice that to practice the thing that I have studied. And so you see, too many times what we do is we self-imprison ourselves by saying, oh, this must be the one thing in the one way. We create a stagnation. And then when we can't really reach the fulfillment that we have been taught will happen for us, then we want to make ourselves wrong instead of realizing Okay, I've have I have exhausted this particular version of my understanding. Now, what's beyond that? And one of the beautiful quotes that reminds me of this is from Maya Angelou, and she said, "Do the best you can until you know better. Then, when you know better, do better. Do the best you can until you know better." So if I walked into a teaching and I or anyone else is saying, um, change your thinking, change your life, um, you know, as, as you become a, a greater monitor of your thoughts, as you change those thoughts, then the quality of your life is going to change. I'm going to practice that. I'm going to take that and I go, oh, okay, I like that. That's much better than where I am now. I'm suffering and I am in pain. Let me try that. And even in the trying of that, even though that that's not the pinnacle of the practice, it's still perhaps an improvement. It reminds me a lot of times about the, there was a, a, a kind of a monitor or a thermometer of emotion. And it's like even hope, hope is not a destination because we don't want to remain in hope. We want to reach a place where we are grounded in a sort of knowing because even hope has its own level of doubt. Well, I hope it works out, but hope is an evolutionary rise above despair. You see? And so it isn't about, oh my God, I misunderstood or, oh my God, I did it wrong or, oh my God, I wasted. Each thing has been a building block, a leapfrog in going to what is beyond. So we don't make where we were or what some might, some might say as wrong, wrong. We recognize that that, well, that was necessary. That was the way in which I got through the door. So for those of you who, who may have been all my longtime students and decades ago, I was all wrapped up into change your thinking, change your life. I'm going to cut myself a little bit of slack and say it wasn't wrong. And yet I believe that there is more. So I have to acknowledge that I too continue to evolve. And right now, what feels best and what I shared with my friend was, I said, instead of us using this precious energy to try to control and to continue to feel um, a futility around this, let's practice just observing the thought and not holding on to it. Let's, let's examine what our thoughts around death are and what our beliefs are. Instead of wishing that we had more time, why don't we optimize the time that we have? What do you want to do? How can I support you and what you want to do now? So you start to see the, the multitude of reframe that is available to us. And Today is, in this part of the world, Mother's Day. And so many people are giving talks and reflecting upon their literal mother. There are other teachings that talk about the, the nature of mothering. There are all kinds of things around the celebra celebration and the honoring of this day. And as I heard and shared that time with my friend, I thought, you know, evolution 
is mothering. Evolution is the most beautiful, consistent form of mothering because a mother, a literal mother, oftentimes has to reach that state where they have to let their child go out into the world. They know that the child is going to make mistakes. And they know that from those mistakes, there are options there. Those options include learning and then making another choice. That to try to mother them in a way that prevents them from ever having to experience a mistake is smothering, not mothering. And so evolution is like the perfect mother. It's like, okay, right now, here's where you are in your state of evolution. Here's where you are in your current awareness. Let's practice. Let's hang out here for a while. And let's wait and see if you grow tired of this. Let's wait and see if you enter into the cave of this particular state of knowledge and take it all the way till you get to the back of that cave wall. And then you go, now what? And evolution says, open this door. Open this hidden door at the end of the cave, at the back wall of the cave that you wouldn't know is there unless you had gone through the entire journey. And so we open it. And evolution as mothering says, now phase the next phase, not even phase two, it could be phase seven, eight, nine, 1000. And you start to see the incredible, infinite, perpetual evolution and expansion that is there. And I'd like to think that the most optimum experience of nurturing, mothering, is allowing us to be where we are and and not abandoning us, being available 24-7, but only when we are perceptive and ready to receive. So on this Mother's Day, I want you to think about not only did we all come from a literal mother, not only have we had, had possibly substitute mothers or mothers or families that have been self-created in our journey, all different types of forms of people who have nurtured us. But I want now, I, I want you to think about the expansive nature of mothering as consciousness or as evolution. And then it lies in wait. And the moment that you and I are ready to go, okay, what is next? What is next for me? And that mothering might say, have you fully unlayered all of this or are you just impatient? Or have you truly exhausted and explored and practiced and done everything at this stage in order to move to the next one? And so I loved my friend and I thanked my friend and I continued to tell my friend that he's not alone in this journey. You could say a little prayer for him. I'd appreciate that. And, um, but that wherever we are, in the experience, whatever it looks like through the lens of the physical, evolution as mother has never abandoned us. And that evolution too, even as we expire from this particular human spacesuit into what the next evolution is, is also a form of mothering. It's like a beautiful graduation. To me, no matter how many caves I have entered and explored and gone to the back of, there is no cave like shedding this and moving on to the next evolution. And it's conceptual because it's hard for us to grasp. And yet it is one thing that instead of trying to spend time preventing it, it beckons and welcomes us. And it says, do not be afraid. Just like the beautiful mother that outstretches her hands to us. Evolution is outstretching its hands to us and saying, look at all the things that you are afraid of. I said to my friend, let's look at all the things that you are afraid of. And together, perhaps what we can do is we can walk into that and we can receive the gift that is waiting for us. On this Mother's Day, may you find your own version of that. May you find your own interpretation of that that begins to soothe you and re reminds you that you are not abandoned or alone. No one is.
no matter what the noise and what the world says, that which is the all cannot, can not be dismissed or absent. And so we accept that. We celebrate that. We know that and visualize that for those who may feel forgotten. Evolution is mother and it loves us. Blessings, everyone. Till next time.